Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, in the last, uh, I don't know, 56 hours of the campaign, things are really spiking up nicely. It's, you know, I've been through this rodeo a couple times, and even when you know stuff is going to come, it's still kind of like, you know, that the spike of the first day is amazing, and then the trough of the middle of the campaign is heartbreaking, and then you're like... And then here comes the last three days, and they're freaking amazing. We're probably going to hit uh, 50, 150,000 before I go to sleep. Uh, and uh, the, the goal is to get into the top five, so still got another eh, 725 to sell in three days. I think it could, yeah, I think it can happen, but it's going to be a squeaker. So anyway, uh, this is you might be confused. Didn't you do a video on this like a, a month ago? And I did a video on the surprise ending and. I don't, I don't even remember what esoteric point I had, but it was a surprise ending. 193 was the last issue. They had actually uh, solicited all the way up to... They did fake solicits for diamond previews in the stores for issue 94, 95, and 96. Um, but this was it. And it made the news somewhat, but not as big as I thought it would. The thing about comics is that it's effectively dead and no one cares so unless you're recasting who 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 hasn't been recast yet iron man's okay superman is a uh legless armless uh uh translucent skinned glowing inuit furry transsexual republican oh my gosh uh, but unless you're doing something like that, basically just nobody cares at all. So effectively the biggest comic book since like it was like the 1950s and they were selling whatever cowboy comic was big back then. Oh, this is funny. There's a, there's a, well, not a pregnant couple, but there's a man and a woman where the woman is very, very pregnant, but the guy's belly is bigger. And for a, for a second I looked up and I saw it and my brain just short circuited. It's like, they're both pregnant. Um, but uh, anyway, so it was a surprise ending, and then people talked about that, and then they just kind of forgot about it. Like, the fact that this is like a a graphic novel, the, the last issue is a graphic novel, effectively. I, I didn't count it. It's got to be like a 60-page story. Um, for a very, very, very reasonable $3.99 uh, was kind of amazing. And then the book itself was fantastic. And I just can't, so the thing is, it's a happy ending. But it's an ending. Like, Robert Kirkman says it at the end. He goes, uh, This is the end of The Walking Dead. That's it. It's over. We're done. Um, so, you know, this is not going to lead into a series of graphic novels. Or, I mean, effectively, the last issue was a graphic novel. It's not going to be one-shots. It's not going to be a spin-off series about, you know, whatever, Joe Schmo. It's, it's done. And... It's they get to a happy ending, you know. Spoilers. It's it's uh, Carl and his daughter. Um, he's reading a story about his father Rick on the porch, uh, but it it very much is is a death. It's it's the end of a series. It's the end of this story, and uh, oh my gosh! Like I'm not even really into The Walking Dead. You know, like everyone, I read the first uh, the the first couple issues with what's his name. He thinks I'm in here. Tony Moore. I wasn't that crazy about Charlie Adler. By the way, in the last 15 years, Charlie Adler has gotten a lot better as an artist. He used to have this weird thing that if he, like, if, okay, so just imagine this is the front of a face. When he would turn the face like this, it wouldn't look like a face that would turn like this. It would look like a picture of this had been skewed and, like, it just looked like everyone was a flat piece of paper that was not facing the camera, you know, in a perpendicular angle. It was just weird. Um, and he's gotten so much better over the last 15 years, you know, of monthly work. Um, but I got to say, the story, even though I don't know some of these characters, I don't know some of their plot lines, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. So it's the future. Things are pretty good. They have a safe zone that appears to be, appears to be very large. And Walker's zombies are not that big of an issue. Uh, one of them comes up to Carl Grimes's farm. He dispatches it with uh, Michonne's uh, 
very simple sword. <laughs> you can tell when they, they're like, uh, Michonne has a sword. And the guy's just like, I'll just do it from memory. I mean, what can a sword look like? It's just basically like a circle with a triangle coming out of it. Or a, a circle with a rectangle coming out of it, right? Uh, so what happens is there's very few uh, walkers and they're being used as a sideshow. He kills one and then he ends up getting in trouble with some character's kid who I don't know who he is. Um, but apparently he's a little problem. So they're like, he goes to court, can't show all of it, and they're like, uh, okay, so you're not in trouble, but you have to replace the walker. Till, so he's kind of like, hey, so instead of replacing the walkers, by the way, spoilers go by this, spoilers go by it. Okay, you're back, you bought it. He's like, instead of replacing the walker, why don't I just kill all the other walkers and then go on the run? So he ends up meeting some of the other characters, and um, I don't know most of these characters. He's like, I'm talking to old dude and the other lady and the person with the scar. I was like, I don't know who any of these people are. But it, it was very well written for stuff that I just absolutely did not understand. Then he has to go back and he has to go to trial. And this is the part that got me. So um, I, there was... I've been reading, you know, one of the things I've been really roasting SJWs is they're like, this is my story about diversity and how racism is bad. That's not how you write a story. That's how a thought writes a story. Uh, you know, uh, Quentin Tarantino's in the news and, he, and I'm uh, going through uh, uh, interviews with him. He's like, you don't write subtext. You know, I, when I write stuff, it's re I'm writing very, very literally. I'm writing about a guy who got in some trouble and he's trying to get out and there's some twists and turns. And then he's like, you know, I, I finished... Reservoir Dogs, and then I realized it was a father and son story. I didn't, when I was doing it, it was just, you know, I was just trying to write some gangsters trying to figure out who, who double-crossed them. Um, so, what is this story about? It's about wrapping up the story. I mean, honestly, if I would say. But one of the powers of, you know, uh, of, of storytelling, actual storytelling, not like, oh, we just hired this person because they have the same earlobes as this character. Hashtag earlobe freedom. Hashtag haters don't hate earlobes. Hashtag da 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 da. And everyone is scared and miserable all the time because we've allowed scared and miserable people uh, to, or, or mentally ill and miserable people, to decide how we talk, how we express ourselves. And sometimes you have to take them to federal court. Um, by the way, the court system in this is ridiculously simple to the point where it feels like it's almost like fake and it's just parodying. Like, hey, what do you think? What do you think? Okay, here's the decision. It's like. What? Courts don't even work that simply in an episode of Perry Mason. But anyway, he's, you know, he's, he says, uh, uh, and I did again the very thing that had gotten me in trouble, only worse. The thing is, I knew they were there. I knew they were dangerous. It was something I felt I had to do. Maybe I'm a relic. Maybe I, I don't look at the world the right way. Maybe I'm not adjusted well enough to this new world. I'm a messenger. I spend weeks at a time on the road, often far outside the safe zone, where things are almost as bad as they were. So the dangers aren't so far in the past that they're easily forgotten. Not for me. So maybe this says something personally to you, but I literally felt like I was Carl Grimes right here. Um, uh, things have gotten very, very crazy in my life for the last two years. I've made enemies all the way up to you know the corporate boards of major corporations. I've uh, uh, found myself in the sights of severely mentally ill and malicious people. I mean, it's just, it's just subway pants shitting crazy people. Um, so there's been a toll, you know? And I, just like he's missing his eye, I do have some pretty you know, serious scars. Uh, but uh, I saw something happening, and I couldn't just say nothing. I saw something I loved, comics books being utterly destroyed by corporate wokeness, by uh, uh, finding people with uh, barely any interest, no knowledge of comics, and absolutely no respect for it, hiring them, uh, attacking the fans, basically wiping your ass with the characters and then getting all treacly. Oh, it's the 80, 80th anniversary of so-and-so. Oh, really? Really? Are they a freaking uh, uh, furry pumpkin yet? Like, you don't care. You, all, all you're trying to do is to get into Hollywood. Um, and I had to say some stuff. And then some far-left extremists and mentally ill people lost their shit. <laughs> and things have calmed down to some extent because of the lawsuit, but, you know, it's still out there. And things are still being destroyed. I'm, you know, Jim Lee goes to uh, San Diego Comic-Con, and DC basically has nothing. They're, they're in complete bunker mode. And he's like, yay, everything went great. I saw, you know, 
not to be, you know, harping on. He's got a good life for himself, but he's like, uh, hashtag comics book, comics life, and he's drawing something, you know, on a, uh, in first class, and this, like, beautiful, you could tell he had to, like, n- like, really focus it really closely, so you didn't see, like, how nice it was, but, you know, some people did good, you know, as much as I say, you know, I feel like Carl Grimes here, you know, I'm missing an eye, and he kind of, like, uh, scarred, uh, I'm doing, you know, pretty good, pretty good, financially, I'm doing pretty good, and, and artistically, I'm being able to do some dreams, thanks to you, but it's, things are still crazy and, and bad, <laughs> and, um, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just hoping for things to get better or for at least for the, the people who are trying to destroy us from starting something new uh, to be able to destroy, you know, I, I was talking to Ethan about some of these people that we deal with and I said, two years ago they were just cranks and now they're complete crazy people. They're obsessed with violence, uh, you know, stalking. I mean, they're just completely unhinged and it, it's because they're being fed a line of support by uh, uh, you know, people all the way up to the corporate board because they don't know what to do. Jim Lee can draw Batman beautifully, but he can't sell Batman. Didio doesn't even know what's going on. He's like, our reprints sell better than our new series. You know, there's people casting about, but nobody's committing to the bit. You know, Rob Liefeld's like, oh, I'm going to be on, uh, I got a new X series. Yeah, I'm going to draw the first issue and the last. What the hell? It's a mini series, dude. Draw all of them. Oh, I'm on Snake Eyes. Let me guess. Let me guess. You're going to draw the first issue and the last. Okay, great. This is a Black Widow movie written by a woman who doesn't like action or guns <laughs> or violence. And she doesn't like superhero movies. And even she admits that her... her, her wah, wah, wah. So, I was actually kind of getting sad because, you know, for a couple of reasons. But mainly because, like... This, this uh, story is a masterpiece, and nobody's talking about it. It came out, and it, it, wasn't, it didn't fall down the memory hole. It was written at the bottom of the memory hole, because that's where comics are. Like, we're in the post-comics apocalypse. Eh, pre-apocalypse, post-apocalypse. It's definitely an apocalypse. It's either near, or we're in it, or it's over. But, oh my gosh. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the top five. Or no, I'm, excuse me. Don't get cocky. You're in the top. I'm in the top six of graphic novels. I'm outselling every single Marvel graphic novel. I shouldn't be in the top fifty. It doesn't make any sense. You guys have all of these characters: Batman, Spider-Man, Daredevil, freaking Jubilee. I shouldn't be able to come within a hundred spots of you. And I shouldn't be able to come within 50,000 sales. And I'm outselling all of Marvel. All of Dark Horse. The only people outselling me are Image and DC and Tokyo Pop. But I think I can, I think I can pass as Tokyo Pop. You Tokyo Pop. Oh, I got your number. Uh, so anyway, uh, oh, I kind of worked myself up on that one. So thanks for watching. By the way, you know, uh, go check this out. It's a second printing. It's $3.99. I'm sure there's... 20 copies of this at every single comic book store. Oh, are there comic stores in your town? Because there's major towns out there in America that no longer have them. Uh, thanks to these uh, uh, mentally ill, malicious people and far-left extremist ideologue extremists. Uh, so thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving the GoFundMe. Oh, it's getting stuffy in here. Uh, so in the last, I don't know. It's like, it's like... Uh, 11.59, but it's Pacific time, so that's going to be very, very late for me, but uh, I think I'm going to uh, try and do a live stream. Um, uh, I, I think I'm actually going to check into a hotel to make sure I have consistently good, uh, you know, uh, internet, um, and uh, uh, what else? So, um, thanks to everyone chipping in in the last few days. It, it's very dramatic, and those things are spiking up. And then the, the, the day before the end, and then the last one. Um, uh, then, uh, oh, uh, Iron Sights 2, 72% complete. And I mean written, drawn, lettered, complete. Uh, so uh, the book is probably going to be done by, like, the day. <laughs> it's going to start on, like, October 1st. And then the secret project, oh, boy, if that happens... If that happens, that's going to be insane. Uh, so anyway, thanks for watching. I'm probably going to do uh, a, a late night video uh, tonight. You know, it's the last three days. You want to do at least three videos 
a day, you know, for motion. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and I'll have another new comic review up in just a couple hours. Bye.